I'm delighted to be able to show you this paper. This is, as you can see, called Toggling Bistable Atoms via Mechanical Switching of Bond Angle. And it's the result, really, of 18 months worth, maybe even more than that, of experiments. And Brady filmed some of those experiments um, maybe six or seven months ago. We had to keep the results of those experiments, we had to keep that video really secret until now. And um, now that I've got the page proofs in my hand, we can go ahead and show you that, that work. So what we see are each individual blob here is a single silicon atom. These atoms form little pairs called dimers, which are, are, are little two atom units. We're going to bring a tip in and we're going to move one of those atoms, change the bond angle and flip it. So what we basically have is the smallest possible toggle switch you can have. This is, this is all happening in here in an ultra high vacuum system. The pressure in there is 3 by 10 to the minus 11 millibar, 14 orders of magnitude below atmospheric pressure and uh, roughly, and at a temperature of 4.7 K. So it's, it's happening actually in, in, in here. The atom that was um, once here, the atom that was down, what we've done is we've brought the tip and we've pulled that up. So it's, ju it's jumped up underneath the tip and suddenly appears at this, this, this new position. Why is this impressive? It's impressive because we are not only manipulating individual atoms we're m and uh, measuring the force required to do so. It's impressive, well I think it's impressive, in that what we've basically got is we're pushing on the smallest possible switch you can have. So the very first time this experiment worked, the very first time we actually flipped an atom happened at oh, 20 to 3 in the morning on uh, the 13th of January, so quite some time ago. So we've been doing this experiment and Adam in particular has been spending a lot of time in the lab at nights and mornings. So what you're looking at is the first time it actually worked um, where this we saw this change and this change we were expecting. So lots and lots of attempts, nothing happening, nothing happening, going all the way back. Something's happening here, not quite what we wanted, but all the way back, lots and lots of experiments, lots and lots of time trying to do this to work and then suddenly it worked. And so yes, flipped and an expletive. This tip that you use to flip the switch to move yeah. individual atoms, tell me about how big that is. So that tip is a, right at the end, we want it terminated with a single atom and in fact we spend a lot of our, our experiments trying to get the tip to that point. And in fact, the majority of our time is not doing the really exciting, interesting stuff like this. The majority of our time, majority of Adam's time in particular, is getting the tip into a state where you've got one single atom sticking out the end. But what that tip is, is basically a piece of tungsten wire, bog standard tungsten wire, that is etched, electrochemically etched down to a fine point. And then it's attached, it's literally glued on to a tuning fork, a tuning fork actually from a quartz, same type of tuning fork that's in a quartz watch. In every quartz watch and every quartz clock, there's a, there's a tuning fork that basically vibrates back and forth, and that's the timing element. So with these experiments, what we do is we glue the tip to a tuning fork, and the way we can work out the force between the tip and the sample is to look at the frequency of that tuning fork, basically, or to look at the frequency of one of the, the legs of that tuning fork and how that changes. Uh, we spend uh, very, very many hours. It goes through fits and starts. Sometimes... It's, it's almost never quite 9 to 5, but sometimes it's almost 9 to 5. But then other times, like last night, Adam was in here until uh, we actually worked. He worked until 9 o'clock. We went out for a meal. Adam came back at 11 o'clock and worked through until 6 in the morning. And sometimes we do. We pull 24, 36 hour shifts. So we're looking again at those rows of silicon atoms. Um, so here's one row, here's another row. We're basically changing the, the orientation of these dimers um, along this row by using the tip to influence each, each, each dimer. So we are flipping individual atomic switches, basically. It takes about a half an hour per scan. Um, so what we have here, here's our first image of the surface where what, we re what you really want to focus on is this atom. So that atom is the up atom of one of these little switches. So we've got an atom here, we've got an up atom which we can see. But then over here, we've got a down atom, we've got the lower atom, which we can't see. And then what we've done is we've brought the tip in above this atom, and we've pulled it up. And then what happens is it looks like that. So now we can see the up atom, and the down atom's done that. So we've got a flip, we've got a toggle. We've toggled this switch between those two states and we're, we're on a single atom, single chemical bond basis.